Okay, in a recent video I had talked about uh, using CorelDRAW's spray lists, but now we're going to talk about um, using the CorelDRAW uh, brush, which is an, another one of the artistic media tools. And it has some important differences of how it interacts with curves. So what, what we're going to do is create a uh, simple chain link here, and this might be useful for some folks that uh, are not really sure how to create some basic shapes in CorelDRAW. I just made a real quick rectangle there, and we've got some curvature up on the bar, up on the property bar. I'm going to make that thicker, maybe something like that. Okay, so we'll say we're happy with that as a chain link. I'm going to press Control Shift Q to convert that to a new object by itself, so there's no more center line. It's all just a, a simple curve as we as you might be familiar with. And I'm going to enable um, uh, Snap to Objects, which is Alt plus the Z key. And when I go to the edge of a shape, you can see how it shows the word edge there now. So Alt is plus the Z key will toggle that on and off. Okay, very good to know. So I'm just going to simply create a rectangle by holding down Control, or a square rather. So what that did was it created a little square that's perfectly the width of one of the chain links there. So I'm going to drag that out till it comes to this point. And the reason I just made that quickly like that is so that when I make a... Um, uh, move this over here. If we were divide to divide this in half, we're going to have uh, you know the chain links that extend nicely along a shape where each size of the link is the same. You'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. So up on the property bar, I'm going to divide this into two here by putting my mouse cursor up there, making a divide symbol, putting the number two. And that just drops it into half like that. Let's say I want to add some curvature to this, like that, but I don't want to add any curvature up on this side over there. So I can go up to the uh, property bar, type in zero there, zero there, and then we can move this over here, something like that. And now I'm going to, I'm just going to convert this to a new fresh curve by pressing Control Q. That gets rid of any of the transformations and all that stuff that we were doing. So it's just a simple curve. I drag that out there. Now I'm going to select both of these and weld them together. Shift select this link, press C and E, and you can see now it's perfectly in place. Now for the effect that I'm looking for, I want to have a little bit of white space between the red pieces and the uh, black one there. So I'm simply going to give it a, a um, you know, a bit of a margin there, give it, make it white like that. And how I gave it that uh, outline thickness so easily was using a macro that I have at MacroMonster to do that. I'm going to make it more like that. Okay, Control shift q will break that little white piece behind there away from the rest of the shape. And now I'm going to trim into this piece there using the white piece. I can make it yellow for a moment just so you can see what's going on. We'll go up to the property bar, pick trim, which is there. Now I can get rid of the yellow piece, select the red piece, shift select the black one, and then I'm going to weld that all together. So it's all it's one single single curve. Now one thing you can do here is you can simplify some of those little extra nodes that might be there. I can see that my snapping is still on because I'm seeing the word edge pop up every time and midpoint when I'm working on shapes. So again, Alt-Z will toggle that on and off. Usually I have it off to prevent annoying me. Uh, I'm going to double click on the shape and we've got these little extra nodes all over. We could probably I hit Control-A. If I hit Reduce Nodes, it'll get rid of a bunch of extra ones there just to simplify our shape a bit. Now what can be useful when making um, artistic uh, media brushes is to convert every segment to a curve segment. So I'm going to hit Control A, go up to here, and it won't look any different. I'm going to change them to cusp nodes. It won't look any different, but when it curves around shapes later on, it may do it more smoothly. So it's a good step to do at this point. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at how we can make this and also the barbed wire pieces here into artistic media brushes. Okay, so just to simplify things, I'm going to back away from my document using the F3 key. And I'm going to scale both of these, all of this stuff up, maybe to about that size for the moment. Grab these barbed wire pieces. I'm going to put them on, a, on page two here, just to get them out of the way for a moment. Save our work so we don't lose anything. Now I'm going to press the I key, go to the brush icon there we have the chance to save the artistic media stroke. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to call it chain three. And so if I was to just simply draw a curve, it's going to stretch the single link and the little pieces across that whole curve. 
that's not what I want. So um, I'm just going to draw maybe a longer curve like that, and it doesn't look right at the moment. But if we were to launch a um, tool such as CAD tool, which has lots of pretty amazing options, one of the functions it has is to divide a curve. Okay, so what I can do here is I can go open up my object manager. I'm just going to dock it in there. See if it'll cooperate. There we go. Just want to make sure you have the artistic media line selected as part of that. If I want to have that single link kind of replicate itself along that path, we could choose, let's say, 10 or maybe even 20 sections. And so it's it's just calculating that out right now to break into that curve into 20 pieces. Let's see what we have here. Let's zoom in. So there we go. So that's uh, worked out pretty well. And uh, so let's get rid of all that. And what I want to do is I'm going to actually just finish this little curve up here a bit better than that. It's getting rid of some extra stuff. Okay, we close down CAD tool there. Now let's say I want to convert this to make it look like a, uh, you know, more of a, a metallic surface. If I was to double click the rectangle tool, I'm just going to scale that in a bit like that. This is like the snowflake video. This gives me a bit of a bounding box before I convert it to a bitmap here. Get rid of the outline, select it all, convert it to a bitmap, RGB, I'll keep all of that stuff. 300 dpi should be all right. Send that into Photoshop. And let's see what kind of ma surface materials we can uh, give to this thing. That looks fairly realistic right there. Let's keep that one. It's going to flatten that layer style. Save that back to Corel Draw, and there it's updated. So now we've got some chain link that looks fairly realistic and metallic. If we were to, we have all we have, all it is now is just a simple bitmap. I could change the pivot point uh, of the ro or rotation pivot point. Let's say something like I don't know, just even randomly there. And I'm going to hold down Control, right click, so I get the plus sign there just hitting control R a bunch of times. So fairly quickly we've we've created a uh, a chain pattern there. So it might not look that interesting yet, but if I was to just scale all that down and give this whole thing a background. Let's just zoom in to see what we have here. So we've got something like that. Of course we've got a lot of different single bitmaps in there. You could always scale it up a bit, copy it all at one time, put it all behind everything. If you just, you know, want a whole bunch of chains, we're just, you know, starting to really tax some of the capabilities of Corel Draw now by having numerous bitmaps going on here. Let's just zoom in on it. And, you know, the DPI is changing on each bitmap as I scale it up and down. But, um, you know, fairly quickly we can create some pretty random and chaotic patterns. If I grab one of those bitmaps, move it to the top of the, the heap there, double click on it, change the rotation pivot point of that. Again, you can create lots of, uh, you know, pretty wacky patterns pretty easily. Put it all together. And before trying to print something like this, it, it probably would choke a lot of different printers. So what you could do is select it all, and go to effects, power clip it into maybe, uh, let's see if it can fit it into a rectangle here. Let's see if it'll let me pick this one. I've actually made a shortcut for power clipping. So it's just dumped it all inside that background rectangle there. I think for variety, I'm going to uh, drag across it, give it some other colors. Let's see what's available here. Okay, well, let's convert that to a, I'm going to actually drag that power, or the uh, fountain fill the other way, just kind of drag across it like that. Convert this all to one single composite bitmap so that it, it uh, easily prints on anything. And I'm going to get rid of the transparent background, I don't need that. And so it's converting those numerous bitmaps into one single 300 dpi bitmap that you could print on any output device. So there's probably literally about 100 different bitmaps there, all fairly high resolution. So my system is doing some number crunching here just to convert it all into one single thing. There we go. So that's all done now. So if we zoom in on what we have here, again, we've got some pretty decent resolution going on. And you could 
you know, we're zoomed way in on it and we've got a pretty decent looking chain type pattern or texture there that we could do lots of crazy things with.